Cool thing about our current cocktail renaissance is just how fascinating the ideas people are coming up with are. You'll see variations upon classics that have stood the test of time and combinations of different cocktails and the things that made them good coming together to make something new, interesting, and just as good as the originals it took from. Today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews looks at the Inzoni, a cocktail from the Milk and Honey Cocktail Lounge, and embraces the fact that its deconstruction of two classic cocktails makes for one of the best cocktails on the face of the planet. The Enzoni on Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, Heather Ho there. My name is Michael. I am a bartender from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and today we are going to talk about the Enzoni, which is a really fascinating modern, I think I would say modern classic, actually. So the Enzoni is a fascinating combination of a Negroni and a gin sour invented by Vincenzo Erico, a bartender from the Milk and Honey Cocktail Lounge in New York City. The drink was invented sometime in 2002 and features a deconstruction and then combination of gin sour and Negroni. The really fascinating part, meaning that the Negroni from, uh, the vermouth from the Negroni rather, uh, gets turned back into grapes uh, as a means of keeping it in the drink but not actually using vermouth, which is fascinating. The cocktail itself has become one of the top 100 favorite cocktails listed on Difford's Guide's 100 top cocktails list. Uh, I think currently sitting at 71 as of the filming of this episode and is the stated favorite of both Steve the Bartender and the folks over at The Educated Barfly, two people who I think we can all agree are worth listening to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and make an Enzoni. So we're making an Enzoni, like I said, that is a combination of a gin sour and a Negroni, and therefore includes all of the ingredients of both of those cocktails. It's gin, Campari, a bitter Italian liqueur, tastes kind of like oranges, but more like orange peels, uh, lemon juice, and then standing in for vermouth, Grapes, specifically green seedless grapes. I don't know if you can get green grapes that have seeds in them, but don't, because why would you want to do that? You also need a small amount of simple syrup uh, to sort of play into the balancing sour bitter gin. Anyway, let's begin. So to start off, we need to take our grapes and muddle five of these into the bottom of our shaker. Take our muddler and press those down until they are fully pulverized and we've gotten as much juice as we can out of them. Next, we're gonna need half an ounce of our simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, which I'm going to try um, sort of uselessly to fit into this lemon, uh, lemon squeezer. That'll get the job done, like I said. Anyway, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. Next up, we need a full ounce of Campari. Technically speaking, you can use any other um, Italian red bitter liqueur. There's a bunch of different uh, aperitifs similar to Campari that come out of Italy. Um, Iperol is the one people are probably most familiar with. That's not technically correct here, but if you wanted something a bit easier on the palate, that's a good way to go. Alternatively, Luxardo makes a red bitter aperitif. I think Zolan makes a bitter red aperitif. These are all good options for the Inzoni. It is originally made with Campari though, so we're gonna stick to the formula. Finally, we need one ounce of gin. That's something that goes into our shaker, so I'm gonna grab some ice and then we're gonna shake to chill and dilute. Like always, we're gonna do one cube whole and then a second cube cracked for the sake of consistency. We're gonna cap that up, tap that down, and shake for 12 to 15 seconds to chill and dilute. Traditionally, this is served in a rocks glass, which I'm gonna crack a single cube of ice into. Once we have our glass prepped, I'm gonna go ahead and give this one last shake, just to make sure nothing is gonna block that internal strainer. And then we're gonna double strain to catch all of those fruit pulps directly into our glass. With our cocktail strained in there, we're gonna go ahead and add just a little bit more ice to get our wash line to where we want it to be. And then to finish this off with a garnish, we're just gonna take a handful of these green grapes. I'm gonna take three of them. I'm just gonna spear those onto a cocktail pick like so. And take that cocktail pick and rest it on the rim of our glass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is an Enzoni. Alrighty, with our station cleaned up, uh, let's go ahead and give this Enzoni a taste. Now, full disclosure, I have never had an Enzoni before. I wanted to save my reaction for the episode, and also I've been trying to cut back on my drinking a little bit, so I took a dry week since last episode's filming uh, to do that. So, let's welcome back the drinking with my first taste of an Enzoni. Cheers. Oh man, that's so cool. 
What's really fascinating is that grapes don't often appear in cocktails. They just don't. But their very unique and distinguishable flavor is perfect for what this cocktail needs. You get the botanicals of the gin alongside the bitterness, uh, the bitter earthiness and sort of uh, citrusy orangeness of the Campari, backed up by the lemon. And then behind this is this sort of like semi-sweet, semi-tart grape flavor. And it's like super noticeable. And it plays off of all of those things way better than I think you'd ever think, especially considering how little and or rather how infrequently you see grape in cocktails. It is super bright, super refreshing, super, super tasty, and like just the right amount of sweetness to combat the Campari, which is like the majority of where the flavor is coming from for it. It's really impressive. It's, 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 feels like a classic cocktail, you know? It's combining a gin sour and a Negroni, two classic cocktails, with like a sort of modern spin on them. And I think that works basically perfectly, which is amazing. That's really, really unique and really, really cool. And also very pretty because who doesn't love a good old fashioned red and green combination? <laughs> Now, you might have noticed that this episode's gone by pretty fast. We're already through the tasting portion, and that's because there wasn't really a lot to talk about. As it turns out, Vincenzo Erico is not a super vocal person online about their bartending. They are just a bartender, and their role at Milk and Honey, a, a defunct cocktail bar in New York City, is really what they're known for. I mean, they have other cocktails, one called the Red Hook, for example, that I heard of but couldn't find a spec for, um, that is like super like sought after and interesting, but that's really outside of his context as a bartender. There's not much there. He does have an Instagram, it is linked down below, but I mean, it's not like a cocktail blogger like me does. He's just a bartender who goes off and does cool stuff and occasionally talks about their bartending. It was kind of difficult to find anything to say about him, so instead I want to do a quick little piece on the Milk and Honey Cocktail Lounge where Vincenzo used to work. So Milk and Honey opened up in uh, 1999, December 31st to be exact. It was New Year's Eve 1999, which is awesome. Uh, originally founded and owned by Sarah Petrosky. Essentially, it was a speakeasy bar in New York City that was focused on craft cocktails, variations upon uh, old school specs uh, and cool, interesting cocktail concepts. In fact, it is the bar that sparked the speakeasy revival that is all over the place now, if you haven't noticed, uh, and uh, also the one that sparked the craft cocktail uh, the, rather the popularity of craft cocktails. And if you don't believe me about that speakeasy thing, there's Room 13, Brando's Speakeasy, Three Dots and a Dash, uh, a couple others that I found online that are linked down below. Those are all just in Chicago. <laughs> Speakeasies all in Chicago. That is crazy. Uh, and that's all because of Milk and Honey and how they popularized the form factor. Milk and Honey would be open from uh, that December 31st launch date until September 20th, I think 20th, or at least sometime in September 2020, uh, when the COVID-19 pandemic would force them to unfortunately close their doors. The good news, and I guess the kind of good news anyway about that is that there was a second location for Milk and Honey opened up on the south side of New York uh, that is now called Attaboy. It's a different bar, it is still open, still operating, and you can still go there and I think get some of the classic cocktails that were originally listed on Milk and Honey's menu. Additionally, there's one in Soho, London, that I think is still open, but I'm not entirely certain if that one closed along with the original location as well. As important as Milk and Honey was to the cocktail, you know, revival, and the speakeasy revival especially, it didn't survive COVID, which is a horrible shame. But the good news is that awesome, unique cocktails like the Anzoni did survive. And I was very, very happy to share that with you guys today. So that is all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at a modern classic that I had never tried before and is honestly super worth trying. Um, if you want to get somebody into Campari who is like kind of afraid of the super bitter sharpness of it, um, go for an Enzoni. I think it's a fantastic way to get them started and is frankly probably gonna be my go-to drink this summer. This is so nice given the heat currently bearing down on us rapidly outside. <laughs> 
Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch my next episode. I make one of these videos every single Friday and then sometime on Tuesdays, like this upcoming Tuesday, where we're gonna talk about the vari a variant of the Enzoni. Uh, all of my socials are popping up on the screen now. I have a Reddit, I have a Tumblr, I have an Instagram, and I am starting a TikTok. And eventually all of those things will be available in the description of every single one of my videos listed on this page which isn't that many, but it's getting bigger. So follow me and you'll see whenever the next project comes up. Thank you again all so much for watching. I wish you all a great rest of your day. I hope you have a happy afternoon. And remember, please drink responsibly. Have a good day and I'll see you all around. Bye-bye.